Hello guys, this is Astocky here, and welcome back to another episode of me playing Dwarf Fortress. Uh, so I'm going to continue with my fortress that is in uh, region number 2. Hopefully it won't take too long to load up. This is definitely going to be a much shorter episode tonight, because it's quite late, and I basically just want to try and get this done. Um, just remembering how I've got things set up. Okay, so I've got my first level here, which really just has a stockpile, and it's going to have a trade depot. Coming down here, I've got my farms, my farmer's workshop, and my still, my dormitory, and then I have my little room just here, which I think was going to be for my chickens. Uh, heading down, I have my workshops. I've got my mechanics, my jewelers, my craft dwarf, metalsmith, wood furnace, my smelter. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually go to craft dwarf. I'm going to designate mine and dig this out a bit bigger so that now I'm going to have space to have a second. Um, well, I guess for lack of any kind of better thing to call it I'm going to have space for a second craft dwarf directly behind the first so there's another 3x3 three three area there and I'm going to do the same for all of these other ones as well that I'm going to need more than one of um. <clears throat> yeah I'm probably not going to need more of the other ones for a little while so I'm not going to dig them out right now and then here, I'm going to dig uh, I'm going to dig a six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. That's not six. I'm going to dig a six wide area there to use as a stockpile, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side to use as a stockpile, and then across from each workshop entrance um, I'm going to add another hole there that will that will help them basically for example my craft dwarf here is going to be able to go straight across and get the materials that he needs to do his crafting or at least that's the plan for how I think this is going to work um, what have we got there we've got some gems what kind of minerals have we got Galena so Galena is an ore that's going to give me silver and lead, which is not too bad. Obsidian is extra cool. Uh, obsidian is a really high value of stone, and so is marble. But I'm thinking this obsidian level is where I'm going to make uh, my bedrooms. So I'm not going to actually mine this out yet. I'm just going to plan this out for now. The way I'm going to do this is just like that and then off each of these I'm going to start by um, I'm going to go from the uh, I go 1, 2, 3, 4 I go 1, 2, 3, 4 see those join up so we can't do that one so we're going to remove that designation And start one further out. One, two, three, four. Two gap, one, two, three, four. Ah, see, now those are still joined because they can move diagonally in between them. Um, darn it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This first one is going to be full size. And then the next corridor is going to have a little bit of a gap at the start of it. What I'm really aiming to do is 
kind of dig out areas that are going to be big enough for my first couple of waves until the, the traders arrive. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's going to cover 22 dwarves. So um, the way that this... Ooh, wow, I totally didn't know you could click with the mouse and, and designate things. Um, well, I guess you can. So 1, 2, 3, 4... I don't know if that's any quicker or not. The way this can work is you can have up to, like your first wave is always seven. And then after those first seven, you can have, uh, I think it's up to 10 in each of your second wave, but it's randomly generated. And then your third wave is always based on your fortress value. So in the case of this fortress at the moment, if I press uh, the Z key, I don't have any creative wealth because I don't currently have a broker assigned. So that's going to be important later. It's not that important just yet. And right now, because it's not that important, I'm not going to really do much with it. But basically, the way the accumulated wealth works is the more your fortress is valued at, the more dwarves you will get in each subsequent wave. So it's important to make sure you have a very valuable fortress by the time you get to when your traders are here. And I'm not 100% sure how that, that value thing works. But I know... Oh, what is that? I've never seen a redstone before. Cinnabar. Now you can see these ones here have three little dots. Three little dots almost exclusively means it's a mineral ore. Now a dot like that, which is just a normal dot, almost exclusively means it's just a normal kind of stone wall. Uh, two dots means it's a highly valuable stone wall, which is again almost always obsidian, unless the two dots are one above the other. Then that means it's some kind of gemstone. Now if we travel down a little bit, you can see this one here has two little dots underneath it. That means it is a more valuable gemstone. Um, and then we have this pattern just here, which means it's a flux stone. So in this case that flux stone is marble. But chalk and limestone and the other kind of stones will look the same. So these textures and patterns of just a single stone basically mean they're different kind of ores. Uh, anything that doesn't have a dot is going to be some form of soil or sand. And the reason I'm building my craft area on this kind of area is because uh, this whole soil and sand thing is really easy to dig through. That's also why I've designated this massive area here, which is where my animals are going to go. And that's why I'm also going to um, eventually, and I might even designate it now, designate we want up down stairway which is I. We're going to start in the center here and we're just going to go down and I normally set myself about 50. Oops. So yeah, he's going to dig down to about 50 and basically what will happen is as soon as he finds a cavern you'll get a message and he'll stop. And I want to open the cavern up, because once you open the cavern up, you'll get fungus and spores and things that spawn on all of your areas that are soil. And then you can then move your cattle and your sheep and your other things that need soil indoors. So I'm going to unpause now. And I'm also going to look to very soon add a noble, add a broker. My broker is going to be my guy whose name is Broker. I'm going to add a bookkeeper. Um, I need to add someone who's not going to be that busy all the time. So I'm thinking it is going to be my... <sighs> bookkeeper. I need someone who's not going to be too busy. So I'm thinking my woodcutter, for now, is probably not going to be too busy. And he's also going to be my manager... 
and my militia commander is going to be my hunter. What did I call him though? Oh, there we go, hunter. So now we can just let that run for a few seconds. And then when I go back to the noble screen, you can see that I now have a broker and he does not require anything. So if I go to enter to have a look at him, he is just fine. But if I look at my bookkeeper, I can see he has no office and he needs a meager office. So he won't function until I get him that. But because I now have a broker, I can press the Z key and I can see the approximate value of my, my I guess, my area. And it is currently not very valuable. It is currently actually not far off being zero value. Um, where did my crafts, where did my miners go? Um, you are carving it up downstairs. Aha, he is carving my single passage stairs. That's excellent. He can just keep coming all the way down here. There we go. Hopefully I'll get a message saying he's hit uh, some kind of ore. He's hit some more gemstones there though, which is good. What kind of layer are we in at the moment? Uh, quartzite. Ooh, we've struck more native silver. Actually, no, we've struck native silver this time. Previously, what we had struck was not native silver. It was uh, Galena. And Galena only has a 50% chance of giving silver when you smelt it. That's another kind of material there. Firelight. Now, there are certain kinds of areas that are more likely to produce... They've gone to sleep. They've seriously gone to sleep on me. Well, back to the surface. Let's see how we went down here. Um, we didn't do too bad with those turkey areas. Didn't get them finished though, which stinks. And for our craft dwarf, we got the mechanic, we got the craft dwarf one, we got the jeweler. Haven't got the rest of these done, but that's okay because I haven't yet given the dwarves uh, the labors that they need to be able to do those. So, craft dwarf is good, jewelers is good. Um, what do we want the craft dwarf to do? In fact, what we really want is we want rock nest boxes. So, I press T, I think it is. The tanner currently has eight oak there. He currently has one marble nest box. So that is going to be good at a later stage, but right now it is not that useful. You can see my four dwarves sleeping there. Excellent, my miner's mining that out. In a couple of seconds, if he gets that finished, beautiful, I can now put my turkeys in there. So I can press I to add a zone. Come up here, use this whole area there for pen pasture. Set pen pasture, and I'm going to put all my turkeys and turkey gobblers in there. And then I'm also going to build a nest box and place my first nest box in the corner. Now I only have one, so it's not going to be hugely beneficial to do that, but at least it's something. Now the next thing I have to do is I have to work out how far I actually have to go down to find these caverns. So I'm going to go to 70 this time. Um, oops, no, 75 it is. Dig I for up down stairway. Back up till we get to 50. And then realize that I've dug it just off center, which stinks. So now we need to mine to join them up. So we can see them all there, digging out my pen. Okay, we've located damp stone. Um, the question is, where was the damp stone located? I think it's going to be... You know what? I just don't have the faintest clue. I have no idea where the damp stone was located. What is my craft dwarf doing? He is storing items in stockpile. What is my mason doing? He's making a rock nest box. So finally, we have him actually doing something. So build K 
capital N for nest box needs nest box okay he stinks I guess we're just going to have to look at which areas don't get mined out here and then fill them back in to make sure they do get mined out I totally thought I had those nest boxes why do I not have any nest boxes what do nest boxes even come under marble nest boxes it says I have two I've only built one build nest box there we go so now these hens will start to claim these and they will start to lay eggs in them so I need to build no, B for build D for door I'm gonna place that door I think I have messed this up I think I've taken out one too many spots indeed I have so I'm gonna build uh, any kind of door just there will work and then I need to build a wall I need to place the wall just there um, I'm going to use uh, schist because it's pretty much the closest because I need to have a solid wall on either side of that door so I can lock the door and and basically have it so that any chickens that any eggs that get bred in there will, will hatch for me because that's a very important part of my strategy is to have lots and lots and lots of chickens making sure if I head down that all of these are still mined to, ready to be mined out they most definitely are so this is you know not what you would call an ideal start but it's not a bad start either I've got myself pretty much prepared and that's basically okay because basically the reason that's damp is because it's directly under a water source but the way mining in this works is when you mine you leave a ceiling and so the ceiling is going to keep any water that's above me uh, in its place they still didn't finish man these guys never finish anything they're unbelievable now my mason is constructing a building so hopefully that means my nest boxes are all built. Of course it doesn't. Of course he's only built like half the nest boxes and then he's gone off and done something else instead. Because that's just the way these guys are. Um, who on earth put logs in a hole. More importantly, how am I going to get them out? I um, think I'll worry about that later. For now, I just need to, I think it's T I need to look at to see if there's any eggs in there. There is no eggs, no eggs. Aha, there there are eggs. So now what I can do is press F to forbid. Whoops, sorry. F to forbid those turkey eggs, and no one will now pick those turkey eggs up, so they should hatch. Oh, my marble wall's built. So once I've put all my nest boxes in, I can now forbid passage to that as well. So we're getting there. It's taking, I mean, everything is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. I need to... I wonder if I can hold that down. I can indeed hold that down. That's a better idea. They still have not mined all that out. They started to, and then they stopped. Lots of damp stone being located. It's because we're digging directly under the water. D, dig. I 
I don't care that there's lots of water there, just mine it. That cat is following that guy around. I hope he doesn't claim him. I hate it when cats do that. Okay, my mechanic is currently mining, so I don't need to bother him with anything. Um, what is my carpenter doing? My broker, who is also my miner, says he has no job. He so has jobs. There you go, digging. Good work. He has found a job for himself. Um, the only thing I can say is he better find a cavern. You go this far down and don't hit a cavern, you've got issues. So where is he? Come on. There we go. Digging down, digging down. Let that run for a second while I connect up this and check what level they are. They're both level 8 now, so they're definitely getting there. Uh, still not exactly the level that I would like them to be, but getting there. More saffleurite. Don't care that that stone is damp, just dig it. I think this is going to happen for this whole area. I'm just going to let him keep going and see how much damp stone he locates. Just keep digging. Okay, D. Mine. Just take it all. There's only one spot left now that he's going to say, Oh, this is damp. So we want to mine that. Just get rid of it all. My other miner still hasn't hit caverns yet, which has got me really worried now. I'm kind of concerned there are no caverns. Okay, my axe dwarf slash manager currently has no job, and my mason has no job. So that means he's built all those nest boxes. So once those nest boxes are placed, I'm then going to seal that room up tight. And then let the eggs hatch. Ah, he's collected the eggs already. Darn him. One, two, three, four, five, six built. Okay, so we want a forbid passage, and we want to keep tightly closed so pets can't go through it and that will now give me uh, hopefully lots of eggs got eight in there got eleven in there I can unforbid the eggs now because it doesn't matter but we're gonna have a bunch and you want them to pretty much get uh, done in the first year I um, think I've messed this up. Yeah, you want them to pretty much get done in the first year because they take two years to grow up to full size turkeys and so that's not all that cool. Now the next thing we want to do is come down to here and we want to start to queue up some jobs for my craft dwarf because he's currently not busy. So he's going to make uh, rock pots. And I'm going to throw that on repeat because I want him to make lots and lots and lots of rock pots because I want his masonry skill which let's be honest is currently not bad he's currently a 5 I want his masonry skill to get, become really really high now the next thing that I want to do is I want to um, now maybe I don't want to yeah I, I really don't like I really don't like 
not knowing things. So, um, down here in the subsidian level, I'm going to go D mine, tell them to start mining out uh, those areas for people's stuff. And I'm going to also tell them to start mining out. three by three areas to be small offices. Now I'm only going to do this on one side. Because I only want to basically do it on small sides. My carpenter, if we go back to my carpenter, where is he? He's there. We want to add a new task, make a bed. Because like I said, I want to prepare to have all the beds and things that I'm going to need uh, for when other people arrive later on. So I've got that prepared now, so that's going to be a pen as soon as I hit a cavern. Now to go down to this level and not hit a cavern means there is something going really wrong. So what I'm going to do is just dig them Sorry. Gonna dig one level up. And then I'm just gonna go off towards the edge of the map. And hopefully in doing that, they will at some stage bump into something. Okay, my axe dwarf manager currently doesn't have a job, my farmer currently doesn't have a job, and my militia commander doesn't have a job. So my farmer can cook, can plant, can gather plants, and can also brew. So I have a brewery here, so let's add a new task to brew a drink. We'll just tell him to do that as many times as he can until he runs out of food. I've got six lots of plant material, so I'm probably not going to be able to do a whole lot doing it that way, but we'll just let it go and see how we go with it. Um... I'm not doing too badly for food. I really need to get my uh, my dwarf in his office there to start counting the stockpile. Okay, so what was that alert there? Needs empty food storage items. So that means I don't have enough pots yet because my mason is still making the pot but he hasn't made it yet. So we're going to go build door. Marble door sounds perfect. I'm going to build a table. An obsidian table sounds nice. And then we're going to build a chair or throne. Lucky I've got two of those. And then the level above this one, which is also made of obsidian, I'm going to tell them to carve out that much area. And then I'm going to segregate it off a little bit on each side. Um, and then we're going to mine take that out. So we just left a little bit here at the edge. Because what I basically want to do is get those set up to be like food processing workshops. And then this thing here is going to be my grand eatery. It's an odd sort of size and shape. But... Um, I'm feeling like an odd sort of size and shape is going to be just perfect for this. Two little doors there. Yep, so we've got enough space for a three, a three. We're going to need to add an extra one. Much 
better. So have at that dwarves and hopefully things will go well. So who is my... Excellent, everyone is now busy. What is my hunter actually hunting? Um, probably uh, ravens or barn owls. Neither of them make for very good eating. Oh, we've got something there that looks like something. Porcupine leather. Excellent. That's a that's a good news story, actually. That means my hunter is already doing his job. Um, it was not this craft horse workshop, or mason's workshop, was it? It was the other one. Uh, so let's add a new task for a table, a table, chair, a chair. There's my farm doing its thing. Struck microcline. So where have I struck microcline? Ah, here. Digging the offices out. Should have lots of obsidian laying around now. Okay, so now that, now that I have a door here, excellent. I can now go uh, Q for room. I can make this into a throne room or study. I can assign the chair, assign the chair to um, my axe dwarf. I believe was the person I made it. My manager. So but now it says he has everything that he needs. So what he should begin to do now is he should begin to uh, check up on the size of my stockpiles and check things out. I can't believe I have so much chalk. Oh, marble, sorry. So much flux stone, though, and nothing to do with it. But this is going to be an absolutely awesome dining hall. Okay, we have something there that is red. Cinnabar. I have no idea what Cinnabar is. Come on, dwarves. Start doing your stuff. Got wood all over the place. So you are going to be just an excellent guy at crafting beds. Um, I don't need any more bows at the moment. Table and chairs. Most of this stuff is going to be okay. Hopefully, my mason is in here right now, making rock pots. Mason making rock pot. He is indeed. Here he comes. He's going to make it out of cinnabar. Struck broomstone. Wow, I've struck lots of different things here. Actually, those are some gems that I've struck there as well. So this whole thing is, is working out pretty good. My fortress is going to end up with quite a lot of value to it. I'm going to brew some more drinks now, though, because I should have some rock pots ready. And that's going to be good. It is now summer. Wow, I'm really flying through the months here at the moment. Um, my jeweler is currently constructing beds. He's up to his last bed though, so as soon as he finishes that, we should be good to queue him up to make some... Yeah, we should be good to queue him up to make some other things now. Okay, so he's just made the last bed. So we can go into here now and we can start to tell him to cut some gems. And in fact, uh, Morian and Tanzanite are gems. The rest of these things are not gems. So we want to back that out for a second. Go back in and we want to say, don't cut granite. 
that's silly, and don't cut gabbro. But these, repeat them and just keep going until we run out. And then my mechanic is still digging. Well, he's drinking, but you know, he should be digging. So he's cutting gems, he's storing an item in a bag, he's making a rock pot, he's hunting, he's brewing. I think my axe dwarf might be the only person who's not currently being fully utilised. And he should be... Aha! Now I know why he's not being fully utilised. When we go to the noble screen and we go to bookkeeper, if I press S for bookkeeper settings, he's currently on lowest precision, which means he's not actually doing anything at all. So that is silly. Now, though, he should be, as soon as he stops storing that item, it should come up that he is um, doing something useful. I might have gone for a bit of overkill with this dining hall. I wanted to make it like a really nice, lavish dining hall. There you go, updating stockpile records. But yeah, I think I went over the top. They're going to be doing that for a long time. While they're doing that... Has someone mined this bit out yet? No, they have not. Okay. So I guess we're going to have to wait for that. Can't plant any more sweet pods because he needs more seeds. That's okay as well. need to hack this whole dining hall out. I think for now anyway I can build a table. And if I build the table kind of over here, if I build the chair next to it, once those are placed I will be able to at least designate this a dining hall and so the dwarves will have somewhere to eat. There's a bit of kind of clutter and stuff all over the floor, which is not ideal. Oh, wow. Um, cancels cut tanzanites, needs more tanzanites. So now when we go to stocks, I can actually see what I have, which is really useful. Uh, rough gems. Currently have six rough morians. But no more tanzanites. So if I go to K for look, yep, there are Morians all over the place. I've no idea what kind of gem a Morian is. Ooh, up here we now have a C, which means someone is in combat. So you press R to go to your combat reports. So the first thing was a porcupine is fighting. Um, so the flying copper bolt strikes the porcupine in the head, tearing the muscle, shattering the skull, and tearing the brain. A tendon in the skull has been torn. Porcupine is knocked unconscious. Porcupine is propelled away by the force of the blow. Um, porcupine skids along the ground, tearing the hair and bruising the muscle and bruising the left kidney. Porcupine slams into an obstacle. That poor porcupine. Um, here we have the porcupine hunting. And then the next thing he did is the, the flying... Copper bolt strikes the barn owl in the left wing, tearing apart the skin, and that's all that's just happened. So let's zoom to where that just happened. So you can see just here where the X is, is where there is now a splattering of barn owl blood. And I'm not seeing any more combat. Does that mean the barn owl got away? Where is that barn owl? Maybe it got away, or maybe my hunter's still hunting it? I'm really not sure. It says he's still hunting it, so hopefully he'll kill it. Hopefully. Somehow I've managed to get myself in this situation, though, where not very much good stuff is happening. But I have grand plans for everything. 
So there we have the size of the dining room and we will make H to make this a meeting hall. I'll resize the room a bit later once they're finished digging it out but for now at least they've got somewhere that they can dine and soon as soon as those miners have done something they'll have an area where they're able to do other nice things so currently on this place uh, lots of different cut things uh, uh, briolette cut morions, square cut tanzanites, emerald cut morions octagonal, lots of different cut things none of them are being marked though as being uh, very good and so when we look at his skill uh, his skill as a gem cutter is only a 2 so he's not exactly in the position yet where he's going to be making masterpieces but hopefully if he keeps it up for a little while he'll get there my miners are back doing their thing I think, just at a guess, I may have enough rock pots now. Um, I don't know what they put them under though. So we have lots of milk. So uh, my farmer now, this farmer guy here, I'm going to give him cheese making and then I'm going to go back to my fortress as soon as I work out how many pots I have I'm going to queue him up to start making some cheese maybe it's under boxes and bags um, no, barrels, there we go we've got tools, ah there we go six obsidian pots, a marble pot, a cinema pot, a cobblerite pot and a stibonite pot so we should have lots of pots so that now when I come up to here to the farmers workshop any workshop farming, so now my cheese maker should start to construct that or at least that's the plan what's he doing at the moment? he's storing an item in a barrel Now we're storing an item in a stockpile. Other people are on breaks and people are digging. No one is achieving the goals that I have really set for them. So I think I've probably recorded for about long enough now. Um, in fact, that's almost 45 minutes. I'd planned to do about half an hour. So um, unfortunately for me, this hasn't been a really productive episode. This is early summer now and... I'm just not achieving all of the things that I was hoping that I would achieve. I was really hoping to have some iron by now. Okay, um, my animals have now worked their way inside. And that's okay for some of the animals. That's not okay for other animals. So, uh, basically before they die, I'm going to create an area for them to hang out. I'm going to start it here make it that big and it's going to be N for pen I'm going to set what I want to have there I'm going to put one dog there I'm going to put a yak cow, a yak donkey a ewe and a ram there that way they at the very least won't die I also for some reason need to recreate this refuse pile here and I might recreate this wood pile here as well. Not totally sure what happened to that wood pile. But yeah, like I said, um, that was pretty much my plan for this episode. Um, in fact, that was my plan for this episode and then some was to basically just get going with some of these, uh, making some pots and making a few other different things. I'm going to cancel that order now so that he stops doing that. Um, just in case my miner ever gets bored 
I'm going to get him to create some mechanisms. He's a pretty good mechanic. So he should be not too bad at that. He's a level 5 mechanic, yeah, so he should be pretty good at that when he actually gets around to it. Uh, if he gets around to it. Because they're currently kind of busy on the digging front. In fact, let's now tell them to dig that out and then say build workshop. We want Z for kitchen. We want to put a kitchen just there. We'll make it out of cinnabar because that's closest. And then the next thing that I want to make is uh, let's make a fishery because I'm probably going to need one of those soon. And you know, that's probably going to be enough for now. What is that? That stuff, brimstone. Okay, I have no idea what brimstone is about, but either way, um, I'm really going to finish up now. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Now, I just thought I would start letting guys know now. Um, next week is uh, Thanksgiving week. So on Thursday, I believe it is, which is Thanksgiving Day. I'm not totally au fait with how the you know the American sort of holidays work, but I'm pretty sure Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. Um, I'm going to be going on holiday, so I'm going to be on holiday for Thursday, Friday next week, and then for the whole week after that. So it is going to be a little while uh, before I make a video after probably Tuesday of next week. So I just thought I'd let you guys know right now, right up front. Um, so thank you very much for watching this episode. I'm going to try and do another episode of this tomorrow night because I'm really enjoying this game at the moment. I'm just, I just want these guys to succeed. These tiny little dwarfs just need to be awesome. Now I'm going to pause the video for one second and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here I am back. Now one more thing. Um, it's been suggested to me by one of my subscribers, Mr. Mook10, that I start to name some of the dwarves in this group after my subscribers. So I think you know, that is a really good idea. So he has picked my hunter. So I'm going to call my hunter now Mr. Mook10. I'm going to know that he's the hunter. And I'm going to find myself now much more attached to him than I was previously when he was just called Hunter. So if anyone else would like to have someone named after themselves, um, they may not be as awesome as the hunter, because, I mean, let's be honest, look at these reports. Hunters just rock. Strikes the barn owl in the left wing, tearing apart the skin. You just don't get those kind of reports every day. So if anyone else would like to have a dwarf named after themselves, uh, let me know the, the particular dwarf that you'd like to rename based on their professions, which are axe, broker, craft, farmer, mason, or mechanic. And also, if another dwarf comes in in the next migration wave, let me know when you see that. Uh, so let me know what name you'd like for them, otherwise I'll use your YouTube name. And then also let me know which particular dwarf you'd like. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are really enjoying this as much as I am. A stocky out.